hearing that brick and mortar malls are really hurting here. Just a couple days ago, the Wall Street Journal published a piece about the downfall of the Arno Mall in Elmira, New York, the southwestern part of the state. It was a brutal read. Some retailers have managed to thrive in this environment, but most are struggling in the face of e-commerce onslaught. That's why tonight I want to talk about Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust, PEI. It's a REIT that owns 22.5 million square feet of retail space in the Mid-Atlantic, mostly Philly and Washington, D.C., one that I personally, being from Philadelphia, know very well. Now, PEI stock has been hammered here. It's down around 45% year-to-date. It supports a gargantuan 8% yield. However, PEI has also been very vocal about the idea that there's a lot of market hysteria around retail, framing the current situation as a kind of detoxing, where retailers that haven't kept pace with the consumer are being expelled so they can be replaced with healthier tenants that have more mass appeal. And by the way, I can also say pay higher rents. Could these guys have a point? Let's check in with Joseph Cardino. He's the chairman and CEO of Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust to get a better sense of how this company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Cardino, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you so much. Thank you, Good to see you, sir. It's an honor you. to have you. Honor to be here. Thank you. Honor to be here. I know your properties well. I know the vast majority of them. And what I can say uh, and want to ask you about is is that there's been a big change. You sold a lot of the properties that I didn't know that I think maybe weren't so good. The ones that are left are marquee properties of which you're getting upgrades of the uh, when a tenant uh, leaves. Yeah. uh, I mean, look, we think we think the retail Armageddon is way overdone, way overdone. And certainly for PEI, you were you were right on point. We were uh, very early to the disposition game. We sold off over 42% of our, of our malls, all lower quality malls. And the result is today we own malls in, in great markets. And, and to name two, Philly and D.C., where a retailer, if they want to deploy a strategy in the U.S., they got to be in Philly and D.C. And, and there are great examples of where the retail headwinds, because there are retail headwinds. Yes. Uh, the retail headwinds have been actually a, a bonus for us. We're in a place well, like talk Ch- about that because yeah. what I see is some lower rent retailers who are also not so nice leaving guys coming in at higher rents that are very exciting to people. Well, if you think about if you think about the the traditional department store, if you will, uh, many of the, of the traditional department department stores are struggling. We're able to take that department store out and to date. Uh, increase their increase rents eight times, bring in new exciting eight times retailers. over what you were getting. Over which we were getting, bring in new exciting retailers that are going to drive more traffic. They're going to drive more sales, drive more customers to the, to the property, and ultimately enhance the the success of the property. I was at I was at Viewmont Mall in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, about two weeks ago where we took back a department store and we added a Dick Sporting Goods, Field and Stream, and Home Goods, we've seen twice a doubling of the amount of traffic coming through that mall entrance. The retailers are in the mall, right. are performing better. Dick's is happy, to, happy as is Home Goods. So it's a all around the win-win. All right, now we have been uh, talking to Dave and Buster's, which is an outfit that we think the world of. We've been encouraging to go in malls and take advantage of these spaces. You've had some dealings with them. Well, yes, we, we love Dave and Buster's, by the way. We like, we've put them in a number of our properties as, as early as 2009 at Plymouth Meeting Mall. We added a Dave and Buster's. We have one at Springfield Town Center in our property uh, in Fairfax County, and we're adding one uh, that we've recently announced in, in, in Harrisburg. So we, we see the dining and entertainment component uh, of retail being a, a definite you know, direction where we're heading. If you, we were having this conversation five years yeah. ago, and you asked me what percentage we had in dining and entertainment, it might be 2 or 3%. Right. Today, we're over 20%. Now, uh, for some of the ones that I grew up in that I know the area is a great, a Plymouth Meeting Mall was the first mall that IKEA came into. Uh, you're getting more European uh, uh, mall, uh, European retailers, because a lot of those are doing well. Well, at Plymouth Meeting Mall, that's a, that's a great story. We actually have 45% of the space at Plymouth Meeting Mall in dining and entertainment. Uh, in, addition, in addition to Dave and & Buster's and, you know, over half a dozen restaurants, we've also added a Whole Foods there. You know, so we're, you know, we've got a new relationship with Amazon right. at this point. 
Um, so that's been a that's been a real win for us. But in terms of the European retailers, uh, we certainly uh, think that they, in terms of fast fashion, are a direction to head. Uh, we have 16 H and M's in our portfolio. Okay. Um, we just yesterday opened up Zara, a, a fast fashion retailer right. that that the millennials are you know, um, you know, are, are very focused on. We opened it up at Cherry Hill Mall in okay. 26,000 square feet. Big. Uh, big store. Uh, so we think clearly fast fashion, off price, discount, dining, entertainment, directions that we need to head. Now, we had the CEO of Lululemon on this week, who's a very bright fellow, who was saying that the lines between online and offline are blurring, but he also wants a community feel at some of his, at his stores. Do you have stores that are coming in that are less alien than, say, the, you know, the uh, hospital lighting old department stores that we don't like, but are trying to get that community feeling and also be able to do business off and online? Well, Lululemon does a great job with experiential retailing. Right. Uh, with yoga classes in their store. There are a number of retailers um, that are doing that these days. You know, one of the things that we're very focused on is bringing in new first-to-market retailers to our properties. Um, and, you know, we, we have our, our first Lululemon. We hope to have more. We have a, a Toomey. We have a number of retailers that are stepping out of the normal mold and thinking about experiential retail. We've got a store opening in, in November at Plymouth Meeting Mall, Five Wits, which is an escape room. Which is oh, I'm hearing about this place. It's very cool. With, with technology, I bought, right? I bought an escape room ticket for my daughter for um, her birthday. And by the way, who would have ever thought that would be in a mall? Right. Who would have ever thought? So the whole model is, is changing. It's evolving. And, I, I and you're, the, you're evolving with it? Yeah, and I use the word detoxing. Right, one I thinks love that. about One thinks about detoxing. You know, it's, it, it's a way to, you know, when, you, when you're done, it helps you to lose weight, get fit. When you're done, you feel better. Yes, you do. Right? And you get stronger. And that's the way we think about the work that we're doing at our properties. Because we've right. sold off the bad stuff, right. and what we've got left is, is getting stronger. Well, I totally agree with you, because I visited the properties ahead of when you come on, and I'm really thrilled to have you. That's Joseph Cardino, Chairman and CEO of Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust, PEI. Good properties, high yield. I like it. May have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.